a very good morning good afternoon and good evening to all the participants and the students for this course multi criteria decision making which is under the mooc series and my good name is raghunandan sengupta from the ime department at iit kanpur in india so as you know uh, we have already completed eight lectures that means we are in the second week and today will be the ninth lecture Uh, for this um, in which is the second but last one for the second week and as we were considering in the several lectures for the second week we have covered definitions some concepts of utility and we'll consider that utility as i told you would be a little bit bigger part we'll consider the subsequent <laughs> examples for utility and the different concepts of safety first principle later on and all these things what would be the coverage under this set of lecture which is the ninth one we'll continue discussing utility theory with examples consider what is expected value of utility then different concepts of lotteries and then go into rational choice properties of utility functions and so on and so forth. so the slides which we which is being covered here coverage is basically the plan whatever you cover that would be exactly mentioned uh, when you access the different type of slides which will be put up accordingly and obviously the other parts of risk aversion marginal utility and all these things will come up not today but in later classes now consider this example and this is a match which is being played by anything can be cricket football kabaddi hockey anything and based on the wins or the losses or the draws points are assigned to the teams and let us consider the team x and y are there and all of the teams all the set of teams who are there playing for the tournament have played the same set of number of matches so for our example we are taking only two it can be expanded also so team x has wins of 14 number draws 20 number losses 10 so if you count them the total value which is important to be noted it comes out to be 70 so if i uh, consider team number y which is there in the same tournament same type of game it has basically 145 drawn 5 and lost 20 so also if i consider the total number is 70 so it can be any other number but important point is 70 for each now consider that you uh, see for yourself that there is one set of um, uh, criteria based on which the ranking is to be done consider that as i highlight as case 1 and another one is the second set of criteria based on criteria based on which ranking would be done is case 2 for case 1 consider the points are giving like this which i am highlighting in red which is if we, if the team wins it it secures 2 points a draw 1 point and a loss 0 point similarly if i consider for case 2 the corresponding points for winning draw and a loss are given as 5 1 0 so if i want to find out the ranking of x and y based on uh, win loss and draw for case 1 point system and then for case 2 point system let us consider it accordingly now in case 1 so if i find out so let me do it for case 1 so the corresponding values are given in the last so i'll just do the calculations so it is for the team 1 is 40 under case 1 14 to 2 plus 20 into 
plus 10 into 0. So, obviously, 0 point is for all the losses. So, if I consider the score is 80 total for win, 20 for draw, 0 being for a loss, total score is 100, which is for A under case 1. If I consider B under case 1, so the scoring is given by 45 into 2 plus 5 into 1 plus 20 into 0, it is 90 plus 5 plus 0, 95. So, if I consider this issue for case 1 for team x and y, so my it should be this is y and this is x for both for case 1. So, if I consider as mentioned here, team A secures 100 which I have calculated, team B secures 95 which we have calculated which means A would be ranked better than B. So, A if A and B are the containers for first and second position, A becomes the winner, B the second position holder. Now, consider the case when we are considering both team A and team B or X and Y whatever based on case 2 outcomes. So, I will use for team X case 2, the point system is 40 into 5 because 5 is for win, then 20 into 1 plus 10 into 0. So, this becomes 200 plus 20 which is 240 and if I consider the corresponding value for y the points I will write it here the slide next slide would give you the, the summary. So, it will be 45 into 5 plus 5 into 1 plus 20 into 0. So, 5 is a 25, 5 is a 20, 225 plus 5 is equal to 235. So, 235 is the point secured for y under scheme 2, case 2. And if I consider the case 2 for x team, the first one, the point comes up to 240. So, now you see initially it was given that the points secured were 195, now it is 240. Let me double check the calculations. 5, 5 is a 25, 5, 2, 5 was a 20 is um, 225 plus 5 is sorry my mistake. So, this would be 225 plus 5 is 230. So, this is 230. So, in the initial case if you see A was 100 B was 95, so A was higher in the ranking. If I consider the case 2, A is now 230, while B is 240. So, A is 230, 230, B is basically 240. Uh, did I do any calculation mistake? Let me check. 
let me check mm, 45 into 5 5 5 is a 25 2 5 is a 20 2 25 plus 5 230 and this is this was uh, 230 was sorry 230 was for b 45 into 5, 5 into uh, whatever 230 and this is basically coming out to be 40 was fine. This was 40 was 200, my mistake 200 plus 20 was 220, 230 and 220. So, this is right, I just misplaced my apologies. So, for case 1, A is 100, B is 95, A is ranked higher, this is important to note. While in case 2, A is 200 and B is 230, which means now B is ranked higher than A, just the reverse, which means depending on the scoring system, even with the same number of outcomes, the result may be different. Now, according to simple concept of utility, on a general nomenclature, we should have basically the concept of expected value of utility, which is given by this. So, expected value of utility, so in many of the uh, examples you will see, this would be denoted by E of U w. Expected value of utility is given by the utility functions multiplied by the probability. And in this case, what we will have is basically you will have the utility multiplied by the ratio of the number of outcomes which supports NW. So, consider that W is the wealth. So, wealth can be W1, W2, W3, so on and so forth. So, the corresponding values would be given by n which is the number of outcomes for wealth 1 outcome divided by the total summation of all the outcomes based on the values of w it can take. So, w is the wealth as mentioned u w is the utility function which is a function of the wealth which we will consider later on. Probability is basically p r is the probability of the utility as outcome based on the numbers and n w is the number of outcomes for a particular value utility and obviously, summation of n is basically the whole set of total outcomes happening for all the different wealth values which can occur. Now, let us consider uh, this concept in a further details. So, what we mean by risky choice and lotteries? So, these concepts of risky choice or alternatives or terms are lotteries, whereby for simplicity for discussion we denote a simple lottery by the case where there are outcomes with different probabilities and probabilities are denoted by P 1 to P n, such that sum of all the probabilities is 1 and obviously, all the probabilities are greater than equal to 0 and definitely probability cannot be greater than 1. So, P here P i is are the corresponding properties for each outcome. On the other hand, consider there is a compound lottery which is denoted by the corresponding L 1 to L k. So, what we mean is that for each outcome for simple lottery, they would can be expressed as multiple outputs for each arm for the simple lottery. So, this if you denote as L 1 to L k and n and k are different. L 1 and n k are the outcomes for the corresponding compound lottery such that their corresponding probabilities are given alpha j's. So, j i denote from 1 to k and i i denote from 1 to n and this each arm is basically given by the corresponding values of the simple lottery. 
and we'll discuss that with an example. So a compound lottery can be deduced to a simple one. A simple lottery can be made into a compound one. Now we will consider that in details. By adding an empirical unrestricted assumption to the rational choice, we can represent it as one which maximizes a real valued utility function. So we will consider that in such a way that the ranking would be based on the concept of utility functions uh, alone. Obviously, there can be other methods also, but we will consider the concept of utility function. It will be invariant for any strictly increasing transformation. It will be called an ordinal, ordinal uh, ranking system. So, any transformation of the utility function uh, and if the ranking system is invariant based on increasing transformation, the ranking would be termed accordingly and we will consider problems here or the ideas here. While cardinal properties would not be preserved in the sense the numerical values associated with the alternatives in X and the magnitude of any difference of the utility functions between the alternatives may change based on the cardinal properties which we will consider again as the ideas. So, consider the lottery example which we are seeing. Suppose we have a compound lottery and here what I want to emphasize. So, the compound one has three arms or three so called outputs denoted by the vectors 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 with the corresponding probabilities given which was alphas as half 1 fourth and 1 fourth. So, if you check the sum of half plus 1 fourth for 1 fourth once 1 comes out to be 1. So, 1 0 0 corresponds to half 0 1 0 to 1 fourth 0 0 1 to 1 fourth. Then the corresponding simple lottery would be given by half 1 fourth 1 fourth. So, it is just not the simple transformation of the probability is here what we had into the corresponding simple lottery. So, what is the step of calculation? The step of calculations would be corresponding like this. So, when I mean by half, it means the half which we have for the simple lottery. It is basically the corresponding multiplication of the first arm for the compound lottery with its corresponding probability, which is 1 into half, then the value is 0 into 1 fourth, third value is 0 into 1 fourth. So, half, 1 fourth, 1 fourth are the probabilities, alphas and 1 0 0 are the outcomes for the first arm. So, the value comes out to be half. So, I will mark and this is the half which you have as a first arm for the simple lottery. If I consider the corresponding second arm, I am using arm in order to make things simple for us to understand is the second output for the compound lottery with the same corresponding alpha values of uh, one four, uh, half, one fourth, one fourth and the arm values being 0 1 0. So, 0 I am using a different color to differentiate that 0 into half plus 1 into 1 fourth plus 0 into 1 fourth will give me 1 fourth which is basically the second value which you see for the simple lottery. And similarly, if I have the corresponding third output for the compound lottery which is 0 0 1. So, 0 0 1 multiplied with its each corresponding values of 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 fourth gives us this 0 into 1 fourth plus 0 into 1 fourth plus 1 into 1 fourth gives me 1, 1 fourth. So, the values of half, 1 fourth, 1 fourth basically constitutes the corresponding idea that we have that simple lottery which is the, the transformation of the compound lottery. Also, one can visualize a different compound lottery, lottery. Now, you are thinking that which means the compound lottery is fixed. There is only one. It is not that. We can have a different compound lottery and the corresponding uh, compound lottery is structured differently. Now, the structure which I mean is that in the first compound lottery, there were three outputs or three arms. And in the second compound lottery, there are two arms with the corresponding outputs and the probabilities. But that should all lead us to the simple lotteries again. So, the simple lottery, if you remember, 
I am here heightening it with, with this yellow color which was half one fourth one fourth. So, let us see whether you are able to get with a different compound lottery. The compound lottery I will use the same coloring scheme like red one was for the first arm, then green was for the second arm for the first case where there were three, three so called arms for the compound lottery and the color um, blue was used for the third arm. I will use the red and green here. So, we can visualize the, the corresponding arm which was 100 now is half one fourth one fourth with probability as half and half correspondingly and similarly you will basically have the corresponding values as denoted. So, the simple lottery in this case would be half into half which gives me half first term second value would be one fourth into half plus one fourth into half. So, these values are going together in the first case these values were going together. So, if it is half into half which is the probabilities alpha 1 and alpha 2 plus half into one four half. So, that will give me the value of 1 fourth which is the second arm. And if I consider the third output combination I am using the color yellow in order to differentiate Again the values are one fourth, one fourth with probabilities half and half. So, one fourth into half plus one fourth into half gives me one fourth. So, this is the third value. So, if you see the corresponding simple lottery in both the cases are same, but the corresponding values for the compound lotteries are different and here is what I will show that with a diagram. So, for the first case of the first compound lottery I did mention there were three arms. So, I will highlight as I was doing with the colors. So, this is the first arm 100 0, 0 with the corresponding value of half if you remember the probabilities alpha 1, alpha 2. So, this we will denote by alpha 1 for the first case. Similarly, if I take the second output and use the mark green uh, 0 1 0 with the probability 1 4 this is basically alpha 2 and these were basically values were if I consider L 1 comma 1 I am donating for the first compound lottery. So, so this I should use red color as I was using. this will be green which is L 2 comma 1 second arm for the first lottery and if we use continue using the same concept of blue color for the third one this will be L 3 third arm for the last first lottery values of 1 fourth which is alpha 3. So, when I multiply the corresponding values accordingly so 1 into half plus 0 into 1 fourth plus 0 into 1 fourth the value comes out to be half which is for the case of the simple lottery here it is. When I multiplied 0 into again I am repeating 0 into half plus 1 into 1 fourth plus 0 into 1 fourth I have the second part of the simple lottery 1 fourth. The calculations we already given and if I multiply consider the case of the third arm for the first lottery 0 into 1 fourth plus 0 into 1 fourth with the 1 into 1 fourth is 1 fourth. So, this is basically the value which I would have for the simple lottery in the first case. Now, if I consider 
the second um, uh, compound lottery which has two arms not not three arms the values i will mark again in the same corresponding even though i use the different colors in the last slide but i'll use the same concept of the coloring for the first arm second arm so on and so forth first arm being red second being green and so on and so forth so if i use the first so this is half which is basically alpha 1 the corresponding is the arm for the compound lottery and I will denote it by L1, 2 when 1 first suffix is basically the arm, 2 is the compound. And if I use the green color, this is alpha 2 and, and if you uh, recollect alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 for the first case was 1. Similarly, alpha 1, alpha 2 for the second case is also 1. This is basically L22 and if I multiply the corresponding values, I will get similarly the same simple lottery as it was given. So, they can be different combinations of lotteries. So, here I consider an example continuation. So, now the corresponding values or the arms for the compound lottery are given as as below. The first one which I am marking in red, the second one I am marking in green and the third one I am marking in blue. This is 100 zero zero and the, the arms are 143838, 143838 with the corresponding probability values as given which are highlighted in yellow, one third, one third, one third. If I multiply the corresponding, another, this is in the second example, corresponding another compound lottery is also given, where the corresponding arm is half of one zero and another one is basically half zero one with the values probabilities being half and half. So, half and half here is basically as I mentioned, I will just denote it as alpha 1, alpha 2 and here one third, one third, one third for the first case is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. Now, where are they denoted? In the first case, this is basically for the first compound lottery in the schematic diagram which you see, this is alpha 1 and this is L1 for the first compound lottery, 1 for the first term, 1 for the second, 1 for the compound lottery. So, I multiply the values as given here which can do it. Similarly, this is the second one L1, 2, 1. And the third one is alpha 3, L 3 1. If I go to the compound one, the corresponding is alpha 1, alpha 2, again sums are same and that results in the simple lottery as given here. So, with this I will end this uh, ninth lecture and which is the last but one lecture for the second week and continue discussing more about utility function later on. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.